the Upper West Side, one of New York City's wealthiest neighborhoods that bridges the gap between the low rises of Upper Manhattan and the high rises found across Midtown to Lower Manhattan. Upper West Side is the neighborhood we see across movies and television that gives the romanticized image of New York City and contains the largest amount of celebrities in any area of the city. I'm Jose and I invite you to experience the most affluent neighborhood in Manhattan. On this tour, we'll visit Manhattan's iconic museums that contain some of the world's most renowned history. We'll explore the fascinating architecture spread across the neighborhood that fills the New York City skyline and acts as a backdrop to Central Park. And we'll get a taste of the environment that keeps celebrities coming back to the area. So let's go on tour to the Upper West Side of Manhattan, New York City. The Upper West Side, a neighborhood whose history goes all the way back to the 1600s when the early Dutch settlers took over the area. Those early settlers faced resistance from the Native American Indians and had years of conflicts before eventually settling in the land. Upper West Side, like many areas in Uptown, was mostly farmland until the construction of Bloomingdale Road, a road that stretched from 23rd Street in Chelsea to 114th Street in Harlem, later becoming Broadway. This road was developed as a relief from the heavy traffic that grew out of the expanding commerce. And the development of Central Park further gave rise to this iconic neighborhood in Upper Manhattan. The streets of Upper West Side, one of the longest stretches of neighborhood in all of Manhattan. It's been called a dynamic, artsy, and lively area where the crowds are younger and the businesses are filled with coffee shops and bars, catering to the different colleges that line up the west side of the city. And no place is better for art than the Lincoln Center. It's at the lower end of the Upper West Side. This area of the neighborhood is where all of New York City's talent comes together, the Lincoln Center, a 16-acre hub containing 30 indoor and outdoor facilities like the Philharmonic, the Metropolitan Opera, and the Juilliard School of Arts. It's a world-renowned performance center for all lovers of theater, music, and liberal studies. Over five million people pay an annual visit to this Mecca in New York City. On this winter morning, you see visitors walking in the public grounds of the center. John Rockefeller III, who also had a helping hand in the formation of the cloisters in Upper Manhattan, built the Lincoln Center as part of Secretary of State Robert Moses' urban renewal of New York City in the 1950s. The 16-acre complex consists of five major theaters and concert buildings, a library, a band shell, and two outdoor plazas, making it the premier location for stage performance outside of the theater district. And the fascinating Metropolitan Opera inside the center is as large as a football field, being able to host 3,800 attendees, making it the largest opera house in the world and as I cross the walking bridge, I'm left astonished by these monumental features that you wouldn't really know of just by walking the outside of the center. The Museum of Natural History sits across Central Park, one of New York City's most famous museums, a pop culture sensation containing over 30 million items, making it the world's largest natural history museum. The famous Museum of Upper West Side, a sensation that's one of the top visited museums in all of New York City. The Natural History Museum has been pushed to the spotlight with films like Night at the Museum, 
an amazing experience that will reinvigorate your passion for world history. Let's begin at the entrance with the marvelous display of dinosaur fossils. The American Museum of Natural History was established in 1869, becoming a major center of research and education of the natural sciences. And the exhibits showcase preserved animals from all kingdoms. And in terms of kingdoms, major dynasties throughout human history can be found within these halls. From traditional Asian backgrounds, we see the historic elements and monuments that create the identity of such an important part of the world. It's home to the earliest of civilizations engineering many practices that have been integral to the development of society. As I walk these rooms, I come across the history of my forefathers, the people of the Americas, the Native Americans that grew into Latin America, and specifically my homeland in the Caribbean, home to the Taino Native Americans who invented the idea of states within a country. The first New World people encountered by Columbus, an American history that still remains prominent and these artifacts can be found all throughout Central and South America, displaying the beautiful art and architecture that has become a symbol to Mesoamerican culture. In the next section, I stand in sheer marvel at the science of meteors. The study of space is one of the most beautiful wings in the museum, and quite honestly, my other favorite study besides history. But the most amazing display in this hall of the Americas is that of Northern Native American tribes. This exhibit is one of the oldest in the museum featuring artifacts from tribes like the Sioux out of the Dakotas, Cheyenne, and Arapaho. From tools to garments, one can simply visualize the life on the plains of North America. And walking through these displays, I just take in the context that a lot of these items have been preserved for over a century, remaining intact even with the renovations experienced at the museum. Let's wander into one of the most popular areas of the museum, the historic remains of giants. The fossil exhibits are the most crowded segments all throughout this venue. People's love for dinosaur is always a big selling point to any museum. And who can blame them? Dinosaurs will always be a fascination to modern man, especially my favorite dinosaur, the Triceratops and I approached the exhibit like a kid seeing it for the first time, excited that the museum contains remains of this beautiful beast. This giant model of a Tyrannosaur takes up more than a room. And to think, a lot of this is made of real fossils. Up to 85% of the fossils in this museum are actual fossilized specimen. Outside of dinosaurs, there are many more animals to discover. And what other species has had a more interesting history than the elephant? From the evolution of woolly mammoth to modern day elephants, this gentle giant is always a magnificent treat for visitors. And the skeletal remains make the exhibit even more enlightening. This 
museum is one of the biggest highlights of visiting the Upper West Side and a guaranteed experience to make up new memories. Let's take a walk around the neighborhood. The streets of Upper West Side, some of the most important streets in New York City. From Amsterdam to Broadway and Riverside Drive, you'll find everything you can think of. New York City is the birthplace of so many culinary staples that form the great American dining experience, and bagels are iconic to the city. This corner of Broadway is the perfect image of Manhattan. Blending the vintage look of New York City with the modern Gotham we all come to explore. And across the museum, you'll find gatherings for farmers market, bringing the community together and further creating a riveting experience as they tour the neighborhood. With the backdrop of its iconic buildings in the background, it starts to feel like its own distinct neighborhood on the Upper West Side. The postcard of the area are the buildings along Central Park West. Iconic architecture like the San Remo, a Renaissance revival styled building that was the first twin towered building in the city. It contains two towers originally built to conceal the building's water tanks. Often called the most desirable and expensive building in the city, it's not just anyone who can get an apartment. Even the pop legend Madonna was rejected on an application to the building. On the corner of 72nd comes all the busy tourists out of Central Park at an intersection that fully captures the model of a New York Minute. And the famed Dakota Building is stationed on the corner with the infamous archway in which John Lennon met his demise. The buildings along this part of town are fascinating and become the famous skyline when in Central Park. So this condo behind me used to be a hospital. It was actually the first hospital across America dedicated to cancer treatment and only second in the world behind London. This beautiful condo, designed in the style of a late Gothic and French chateau, was founded in 1884. The research conducted in this facility became the model for present day clinical scientists. It eventually went from the New York Hospital to the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, ranked the second best cancer care hospital in the nation. So that's the beauty of the Upper West Side. Central Park runs the same length as the neighborhood. At the end of Riverside Drive, we walk through the residential apartments and encounter the beautiful Joan of Arc Monument, an equestrian statue that has been imitated across many big cities throughout the world. Unveiled in 1915, Thomas Edison was one of the attendees to show off this beautiful bronze and granite statue that becomes symbolic to the neighborhood. The Hudson River looks amazing from here, and we're able to see the George Washington Bridge, so we're not too far from Harlem, Washington Heights, and Inwood. But this beautiful piece of architecture is New York City's Sailors and Soldiers Monument, a monument that commemorates the Union's army during the Civil War. It has a Greek inspiration with 12 Corinthian columns. It's made of white marble to mimic the Shiragic near the Acropolis of Athens. The remnants of war. New York State, more than any other state, contributed the most amount of armed forces to the Union during the Civil War. 
400,000 soldiers marched to battle their countrymen, with 50,000 not returning home. And this monument was constructed in 1902 to commemorate their valor for the nation. Currently undergoing restoration, the Sailors and Soldiers Monument showcases the great leaders that fought for the Union. This towering monument represents so much more than the Civil War. It represents the soul of New York City and the individualism that can be found all across the five boroughs. A soul of Upper West Side. It's an homage to all the famous battles fought in the area of New York, from George Washington's many battles during the American Revolution to the tragedies of September 11. New York City is an anchor for so many historic moments. As I observe the cannons, I look back at this tour of Upper Manhattan and the many battle sites we've come across. One third of the battles in the American Revolution were fought in this state, further adding the importance of the most popular city in the world. It's not just a mecca for entertainment, but a symbol for the birth and growth of America. And as I take a moment to photograph the monument, I take pride in seeing the heroics that have come out of my hometown. So we're in Upper Manhattan, and of course, the hills. Now they're not as pronounced as Inwood, Harlem, or Washington Heights, but they're still as hilly. I mean, Central Park is a great example. And if you go down Riverside Drive, it's gonna be a big trip. The infamous Hudson River. What connects the city to the rest of the state? And right across, we're able to see New Jersey and the sister harbor city of Bergen. This is the Hudson River Greenway, the longest stretch of greenery in all of Manhattan. It stretches for 31 miles from Upper Manhattan all the way down to Battery Park. And it actually connects to the larger trail system of America, 3,000 miles going from Maine all the way down to Florida, the most used bike system in all of the country. It's also very loud. Right there, that's the highway, the Henry Hudson. The Upper West Side residents fill up the trails of the Greenway with walkers, joggers, and cyclists taking advantage of this warm winter day. Riverside Drive has been featured across all segments of pop culture, from the odd couple to the warriors. An iconic neighborhood in its own right to the history of Manhattan. The Upper West Side has a unique identity mixed with styles from Upper and Lower Manhattan. It has everything you'd want in a New York trip, from iconic foods to great entertainment and history. And the fact that Central Park is adjacent to the area, further adding the excitement of a New York adventure. I'm Jose, and if you like what you've seen today, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and share. If you want to see more adventures in Upper Manhattan, please stay tuned for the following video. Until next time.